pleasure now to introduce to the stage Eric Wolf, the International Car Wash Association CEO, and Jeff Geisens, the association's president, to present this year's award winners. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Dave. Each year, members of the car wash industry make accomplishments that are truly notable. Whether by driving efficiency through process improvements, expanding business opportunities with new technologies, or striving to preserve our environment, individuals and companies are continuously improving the car wash profession. While there are many accomplishments to choose from each year, International Car Wash Association is proud to recognize a select few of these industry champions. Recipients of the Environmental Leadership Award, the Brian Campbell Innovation Award, and the Hall of Fame Award have stood out enough to be nominated by their peers and have passed a rigorous selection process run by our awards committee. And in true car wash fashion, they've come out shining. Uh, on to our final award. Since 1962, the International Car Wash Association has honored one individual each year with its highest recognition, induction into the Car Wash Hall of Fame. Past winners have included leaders like James Bellinger, Joe Dom, Dan Hanna, Herman Deal, and Ron Peterson. By providing excellent service, breakthrough technologies, or innovative business models, each winner has left a significant mark on the industry. This year, we are proud to add someone to the Hall of Fame that meets these high standards in every way. I am very pleased to share that the 2010 Car Wash Hall of Fame inductee is Mike Mounts of Cloister Car Wash. While I would be glad to personally tell you the many reasons why Mike is so deserving of this distinction, this short video best summarizes his many accomplishments. If you were to ask Cloister Car Wash owner Mike Mounts to identify the key to his success, he would likely tell you something about his employees providing an outstanding experience for customers. But that would only give you a small part of the Cloister story. Mike has built a great car washing company through nonstop attention to detail and willingness to tinker with absolutely everything. Add to that Mike's fiery entrepreneurial spirit, enthusiasm, and perseverance and it's easy to see why he is an equal among industry leaders. From the age of 15, Mike had a dream of running his own business. When he purchased a small rundown car wash in 1984, he never looked back. Today, there are four cloister wash and lube facilities in Pennsylvania, washing and servicing 700,000 cars per year. Size and volume is only part of the cloister equation for success. Mike's obsession with delighting customers brings them back time and again. A high standard of appearance, professionalism, and service to customers is required of every member of Team Cloister. Flower beds and artistic signage welcome customers from the outside. The spotless interior, beautiful murals, and the comfort of waiting rooms make customers feel at home. Mike's drive for innovation has led to constant improvements in the quality and efficiency of cloister operations. From experimenting with new cleaning products to devising a unique downdraft hothouse drying system, Mike has worked to achieve a perfect balance of maximum efficiency while meeting his demands for high quality. Mike's passion goes beyond the car washing profession. Through the Grace Network, Mike and his wife Rhoda have given over $3 million to local organizations. In addition, Mike honors his fellow veterans through Grace for Vets, a program whereby any veteran can have his or her car washed for free on Veterans Day. It is because of his passion for car washing, his drive for innovation, and his care for others that we are proud to induct Mike Mounts into Car Wash Hall of Fame. 
Please join me in welcoming our 2010 inductee, Mike Mounts. Wow, that was pretty awesome. And honestly, the, the 27 years that we've had has just been phenomenal. And uh, I'm honored and humbled by this opportunity uh, to work with you guys. There's a bunch of people I'd like to give some credit to. Uh, number one, I'd like to give credit to my God. Uh, with him, through my life, everything has been possible. My wife, Rhoda, of all the years, she's not only my wife, she's my lover, she's my soulmate, she's my everything. So I love you, Rhoda. To my kids, Elton, Weston, and Tanya, that have all helped out within the business. Um, they've just su supported me the whole way through. To a sister, Rosemary, who lives in Terry Haute, Indiana. She's a Carmelite nun. She's actually a cloistered Carmelite nun. She's one of 12. Uh, she prays for me every day in my family, in my business. The truth is they pray for us all every day. So I, I just certainly want to send a thank you out to them. To all the past and present employees, it's not only the present employees we have, but the past ones that have went on and found something else that they love as much as we love car washing. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them. One of them is Dell Burkholder. He's with us today. Uh, when I bought the business in 1984, I paid $380,000 for it. And uh, I tell everybody I paid 10000 for the business, and the rest was for uh, Dell, and I got a bargain. So uh, God bless you, Dell, and I'm glad you're with us. Uh, I think everybody needs a mentor. My mentor sits right behind Dell. His name's Tom, Tom Hoffman. Just a true, true friend. Uh, the best. His wife, Carol, his sons, Tommy and his daughters, they've just been real special to me. Me and Tom's hunted together, we've worked together, we've laughed together, and we've cried together. And uh, one time me and Tom were crying, and Tom looks at me, he says, you know, Mike, he says, it's okay to cry. And uh, I said, what? He says, it's okay to cry. I said, why is that? He says, because the more you cry, the less you pee. So if, if you see me crying up here, you know I'm just trying not to pee, okay? So anyways, uh, Tom, without sounding a little, he, he's got a kind of an odd shirt on today, but I do love you, Tom. <laughs> uh, beyond that, uh, I want to lastly uh, thank the ICA. They've just been excellent over the 27 years. They've been very helpful uh, with the educational opportunities, putting things like this where you can network together. It's just been phenomenal. Uh, I don't know, out of the 27 years, we've probably made 18 at least. And boy, if you can't come to one of these shows and walk away without learning at least one thing that's going to pay for your trip, uh, you probably weren't looking. Uh, so thank you, ISI and the group. Lastly, the vendors, uh, way too many to list, but they've just been phenomenal. They've supported me through good times and bad times, and I, and I thank, thank my vendors for it. I just real quickly have two quick stories I'd like to share with you. You know, it, it looks great on the screen, and uh, they did a wonderful job putting it together. And just like you's, though, it's never been always easy. And I just have to go all the way back to uh, when I was in second grade, believe it or not, and I failed second grade, and they had me repeat, and then they pushed me through to third grade. Then they had me fail third grade. I don't know what I did. I don't know if I didn't carry my lunchbox in or didn't hang my coat up right or whatever, but I failed second and third. Back then, they didn't know what dyslexia was, and uh, Jeff shares the same, uh, same illness with me. Uh, but back when I went to school, they didn't realize what it was, and they, I think they just passed me on the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and um, uh, all the way through. I got into uh, ninth grade, and I was the only ninth grader who was driving a new car to work, or to school, and I felt a little bit awkward. Uh, I'd start working when I was 10, so by the time I got 17, I could buy my own car. And uh, so uh, I dropped out in ninth grade, and the Vietnam War was going on at that point, and a lot of my friends were older, so I joined the Vietnam War uh, and, and joined the service. In 1972, I got out, and I'm working back at a company, and there, we had some special guests coming that day, a guy by the name of Mark Donahue and Roger Penske. And I was starstruck. Mark had just won the Indianapolis 500, and Roger, being the team owner, had just won his very first IndyCar race 
He has since went on to win 15 more. But they were there and they came in and Mark came down and says, I understand there's a young guy here who likes racing. And I said, yeah, it'd be me. And he says, let's sit down. So I'm trying to find a place to sit down. He says, oh no, these cardboard boxes are great. So we went over and we sat in a cardboard box. Half an hour later, Roger comes down, sticks his head around the corner and joins in on the conversation. And as he was leaving, he looked at me, he said, Mike, do you know what makes a winner? And this is a guy, again, that failed twice, dropped out of high school, went, went into the service. And I'm thinking, God, it has to be the biggest motor. It has to be the biggest, fattest tires. It has to be the best driver. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And Roger said to me, Mike, it's the three Ds. I thought, well, man, I'm good at getting Ds. <laughs> and he said, Mike, he says, you have to dream it, design it, and develop it. And I just looked at him, and it was like he tattooed it across my forehead to dream it, design it, and develop it. And I can honestly tell you, that day, sitting on a cardboard box, was a day that changed my life. Because here this fellow was, giving me the recipe that I needed to succeed, was the dream, design, develop. It doesn't matter if it's in your working world, at your car wash, or if you're a vendor, if you're just relating that to your house, to your home, to your family. Dream it, design it, and develop it. I know Tom Hoffman is a, an unbelievable hunter, and I guarantee you he has dreamed every hunt before he's done it. Nobody's walked on this moon without a dream coming first. So when Roger said that, that set the course. So I do have to thank Roger for that. Uh, wrapping up, I, I just want to mention a little bit about the Grace for Vets program. It's a wonderful program. Last year in 2009, we washed 60,744 cars. We did 252 different car wash companies. And that's hand -baked companies and big automatics. Anybody can wash a car on Veterans Day on November the 11th. We did 44 different states, and it just turned out to be phenomenal. Our 2010 gold is 100,000 cars. Can I get a quick glass of water? Oh, uh -huh. thank you. My lips are turning to be glue. Uh, our goal this year is 100,000 cars. The only way we can reach that is for everybody to participate. I honestly think we can get much higher than that type thing. We've never done anything at Cloyster that has motivated employees, has motivated our customer base more than this has. And that's when customers come to you, they tell you they're a vet, they don't have to prove identification. If you've been in the service, you know it's an honor-based pro program. So when they come, they say they've been in the service, you honor it, you give them a free car wash. I would love to tell you, I can almost guarantee you, you'll be happy if you do join in on the program. The nice thing about the Grace for Vets is everybody's doing it together under one umbrella, under the car wash program. It's not me getting the credit, it's the vets that are getting the credit. I just happen to be the spokesperson. In the last two minute story, if, or 30 second story, people ask me why did I get started with the Grace for Vets program. I told you I was in the service and I told people that I would probably tell it someday. But I was in the service, and I was during the Vietnam War. And during the Vietnam War, I got myself into a situation of hand-to-hand -hand combat, got thrown off of a cliff, hit the ground, and shattered my hips. The truth was, I wasn't in Vietnam. I wasn't in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was still stateside, but I rolled out of a bunk. <laughs> it was a high bunk, it was at least as high. Rolled out of a high bunk, I hit the ground and shattered my hips. They picked me up, they put me on a stretcher, they took me to the hospital, they put me in a body cast from my armpits down to my toes. I laid there for two months, they then uh, got a helicopter, medevac helicopter, and they flew me to Valley Forge Military Hospital. And as the helicopter was landing, I'll never forget the pilot giving me the thumbs up, and I'm on a stretcher, and I can still hear that helicopter today, that <laughs> And they're unloading me and they're going and, and the people are running out from the hospital and they come out and they used to make African blankets, handmade blankets, and they used to cover the soldiers up and they came out and they covered me up with this blanket. And this woman looks at me, the Red Cross lady, and she says, what limbs are you missing? And I said, what? She says, what limbs are you missing? I said, I'm not missing no limbs. And she laid her head on my chest and she started crying as they pushed me into the hospital. And I wondered, what the world is this all about? And they get me into the hospital, and I, and I no sooner go through the door, and I realize I'm at the amputee center of the... I'm 
trying not to pee here. <laughs> I realized I'm at the uh, Ampertee Center of the United States, and thousands of men are there with no legs and no arms. And I asked God at that point, why did he place me there? Why did he place me there among all these heroes, all these people that are missing their arms and legs, and me, 17-year-old, <laughs> roll out of bed and break my hips, and I'm with these heroes. And the truth of the matter is, he placed me there that day so I could be here this day, asking you to support these people. They deserve it. God bless you. God bless the car wash business. Thank you very much.